Hello everyone, and in this video, we're going to be looking at five powerful hacks that will maximize your use of ChatGPT's deep research feature, helping you get faster, more accurate, and better structured results. And as we know, ChatGPT's deep research feature is basically an agent that uses reasoning to synthesize large amounts of online information, and it completes multi-step research tasks for you. And now it's available for the Plus users. So basically what happens is that once you provide it with a prompt, it will find, analyze, and synthesize hundreds of online sources to create that powerful comprehensive report at the level of a research analyst. And the amazing thing is that it also leverages its reasoning to search, interpret, and analyze not only massive amounts of text, but images and PDFs on the internet as well, so that it can provide you with the information that you need for your report. And you'll find that once you conduct your deep research, it says here that it may take anywhere from five to 30 minutes. So if we head over back to ChatGPT, this is the interface and we have to activate the deep research button in order to start using it. And you'll see here that it gives you 10 deep researches a month. So I've already used two of mine. So it says a available until April 7th, and then it resets the following month, and then you get 10 more deep researches. So let's start off with our first hack in order to maximize the use of deep research and really get the best results from it. So the first hack is to use clear structured prompts for better and more accurate deep research results. And this is important because it prevents it from coming back with unstructured and hard to read reports, especially because we know it can come back with very lengthy answers. So this will give it a guide in terms of how you want the information to be structured. It saves time on formatting. So we're going to add a prompt here that says conduct a deep research literature review. So I specified here that the first use case I wanted to create is a literature review on the impact of AI on healthcare and follow these guidelines. So the first thing I've done here is specify the source types and I've asked it to follow these guidelines, which is use only peer reviewed journal articles, government reports and industry white papers. And you'll see that this is a literature review. So my sources have to be extremely credible. I've specified the structure as well to organize into clear sections, which include the introduction, key themes, opposing viewpoints, methodologies used, research gaps and conclusion. I've specified the depth I want it to go into. So summarize each study in three to five sentences, including methodology, key findings, strengths and weaknesses. I specified the kind of citations that I wanted. And I've also specified that I wanted to conduct critical analysis. So it includes opposing viewpoints. It discusses any conflict in the studies and provides alternative interpretations. So you can see that I've specified quite a lot of information. And this is completely different than just putting a prompt that says, conduct a deep research literature review on the impact of AI on healthcare. Now I'm, I'm asking it to be really thoughtful in the way that it gathers information and trying to get the output as close to what I want as possible. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to see is that once you've submitted your request, it now asks you a series of questions. So it says, thank you for your request. Before I begin the deep research, could you specify the time frame of interest? Is it the last five years, the last 10 years or no restriction? So I'm just going to say the last five years because this is something that is quite recent as well. And then any specific areas within health Okay, you'd like to focus on. So I'm just going to write here all and then your preferred citation style. So now I've specified my information. I'm going to respond to that. So you can now see that it tells me, great, I'll conduct a deep literature review on the impact of AI on healthcare, focusing on the peer reviewed journal articles that I specified, and they'll be published within the last five years. The review will cover various aspects of healthcare, including diagnostics, treatment, patient care, hospital management, and ethical considerations. And then it's basically reiterated the information that I've said in my prompt, which is the review will be structured into sections. Each study will be summarized in three to five sentences, and it will use APA citation. And you can now see that it's it's starting to summarize literature review, delving into the current AI trends. It's used four sources already. Now, if we click on the sources, what you'll see is that there's a right hand side panel here that not only specifies the sources, but it also specifies the activity of what's happening. And if we go through that, this is really quite interesting because it tells us the process that it's following to create that literature review. So let's see what it's done so far. So it says, I'm mapping out the sources needed for an in-depth literature review on AI's impact on healthcare, focusing on diagnostics, treatment, patient care, and so on. I'm mapping out government reports, white papers from entities like WHO, EU, national agencies, and healthcare. So it's searched for AI healthcare literature review from 2020 to 2022. What you'll see here is that, for example, here, it's summarizing literature review, which outlines the artificial intelligence role, medical imaging, 
virtual patient care, medical research, patient engagement, administrative applications, and then it will be adding citations that will support key points. And then it's saying, hey, I'm gathering a comprehensive list of key studies, it's categorizing them into groups. So can you imagine the amount of work that you'd need to do in order to conduct that kind of literature review? This is basically, it's going through this similar process that you would do in terms of gathering and analyzing and summarizing that information as well. Now it's working through a systematic review. And you can see that here it's still continuing to search for the information. It's assessing some study qualities. We're now up to 34 sources. Considering a 2017 report, but it's questioning its relevance given the five-year requirement. But again, it's working through my instructions. It said, okay, this is a good 2017 report, but because I specified five years, it now has to go back and consider that it needs to focus more on more recent reports. It's found something interesting here. It says line 13 highlights AI's role in boosting pathology precision and rates. This suggests an intriguing development in the field. So it's actually captured something that's found interesting, that's quite different, and it wants to note that down. Again, similar to what we do if we're conducting a literature review, if we find something that is interesting or a new development, then we would likely want to add that into our literature review as well. And now we can see here that it's clarifying the methodology trends and you can go through the whole list of activity. It's already doing an amazing job. Let's quickly evaluate some of the sources while it's coming back with the result. So it's still in the process of compiling sources. Let's see what happens when we click on one of the sources. You'll see it just takes you to the general page. It doesn't give us the actual article that it's referencing for now. Let's see if it does that at the end of the report. Okay, so it's come back with the results now. And if you can see, it's taken actually 19 minutes this time with 48 sources used. And we can see here the full 48 sources that it's used on the side hand panel. And I've noticed that the more instructions that you give it, the longer it will usually take to produce the output and the results. So it's come back with an introduction here and we've got the sources that it's used. And what I like is that it's actually given us the full article. So if I click on the source, it's actually downloaded that full open source article that it's used. And it's given us a really good introduction here. It says early successes have demonstrated that AI can enhance diagnostic accuracy, personalized treatments, streamline hospital workflows and empower patient self-care. And again, if we click on the articles, we can see that it actually highlights the part that it's taken the information from. And this is really helpful because then I can evaluate whether the information it's taken is actually correct or not. So I can see that the information that it's drawing on here is actually quite accurate. And then if I scroll down, I'll see that it's begun to highlight the key themes that it's extracted from the articles. We've got here AI in diagnostics and clinical decision making. And what I really like about the response is that, again, it's responded to the instructions. It's actually not only just given me a summary of what's happening, it's been really critical in the way it's come back with the results. So it tells me about the strength and that it also brings up limitations. So for example, here it tells me a notable limitation is that it was a retrospective evaluation, not a live clinical trial, leaving uncertainty about performance in real world screening workflows. And so this is something that I can use when I'm writing up my literature review, I can bring in some critical analysis and why we need to also be careful about using certain studies or making certain claims. And you can see it goes on to do this for all the themes that it has identified. For example, AI in treatment and drug discovery. Again, we can see some of the strengths, some of the weaknesses. We've got all the sources here that we can click on and find the information and find out where it's extracting the information from. And then it covers the ethical considerations and AI governance. And over here, it then starts to talk about opposing viewpoints like I asked it to in the instructions so I can bring in that critical element as well when I'm writing up my literature review. And again, if I click on the sources, you'll see that it always highlights the parts that it's taken the information from. And it also provides me with some critiques of the AI research, response to some of these concerns with the relevant articles. And then it goes on to the methodologies used in AI and health research. If we look at the results that it's come back with, it's actually quite interesting. It says we also see prospective interventional studies beginning to emerge. Also tells me about some hybrid methods that I can explore. So some really interesting information that it's extracted not just the general information that I expect to find, it really has dug deep into different viewpoints, different methodologies that I can use to build my paper. If we look at the research gaps, again, it's come back with some really interesting results that I could explore, such as ethical and policy related gaps. It tells me here that the literature points out gaps in data quality and sharing, and then summarizes the research gaps here for me. And then finally, it comes up with the conclusion and the list of references that it's used in this literature review. So it's done a great job in coming back with a literature review that responds to all the instructions that I asked it to in my prompt. 
And I'd say that this would really save me hours of work in terms of research that I would have had to do myself in order to compile something nearly as comprehensive as what I've seen here from the output. Okay, for the next hack, we're going to be taking advantage of Deep Research's ability to work with text, images, PDFs, data, in order for us to compile a more comprehensive report. So I'm going to add a prompt here that says, analyze the impact of AI on workforce automation and job market trends by extracting insights from multiple formats. Use the following structure. So government reports, summarize AI labor market trends from policy papers, labor statistics and economic impact assessments, industry PDFs and white papers. So analyze again reports from firms like McKinsey and so on, data sources, any relevant data on the topic, data visualizations, identify and interpret charts and graphs showing employment shifts by sector, automation risk and workforce retraining efforts. And I'm going to activate my deep research and I'm going to enter that. And again, you can see that it first asks us a series of questions. So here it's asking me, do I want to focus on a particular region or is there a country focus or should this be a global perspective? Is there a preferred time frame? Are there any particular industries of interest? Would you like a summary document, a structured report or just key insights in a conversational response? So I'm going to quickly answer the questions. And as before, you can see that it's now starting the research and then it will let us know when the research is complete. And again, we can open up the sources on the right hand side panel and we can again track the activity and look at what it's doing. So it's compiling government industry reports, again, identifying key data points. And you can see it's looking at OECD data on AI's influence. And like I specified, I wanted to focus on data this time. Here it tells us I'm thinking about how a generative AI discussion might show that 40% of jobs could vanish by 2030. And we're going to see how it starts to integrate that information and that data analysis within the structured report that it produces at the end. You can see now it's come back with the result. It's taken seven minutes and it's used 33 resources. And if we look at the research that it's produced, it's now come back with the impact of AI and workforce automation and global job market trends. It's first looked at government reports and international organizations. So we've got information here from the ILO and we've got the different sources. And then it's got information from the OECD and International Monetary Fund and it's analyzed that information and it's extracted some key data points from that as well. And then it's given us the information from the industry white paper papers and expert reports. Again, a lot of statistics and data that it's analyzed. And we've got the sources included here as well. And this is the really interesting part because now I've specified that I want it to look at specific data points that support my report. So I've got here information from McKinsey. It says in practice about 15% of work hours could be displaced by 2030. And if we look at the McKinsey report that it extracted this information from, you can see that it's a very graphic PDF. And if we just have a look at where it's extracted the 15, it's actually taken it from this image as well, which is really great because now I know that it's able to read the PDFs. I know that it's able to extract the different data points from that. So it's done a really good job. And if I carry on, you can see that it's got all kinds of sources that it's extracted the information from WeForum here as well. It's talked about the sectoral differences, the skills, demands, and talent gaps. And then for our final category, now it's looked at the data visualizations, the trends and the insights as well. And it's also done deep research on the various charts. So we've got the chart above illustrates the shifting human machine frontier in the workplace. In 2022, an estimated 34% of work tasks were performed by machines. If I click on the image, I can see that it's extracted the 34% from this image and it's done the same with a variety of images as well. So this is another very useful way to make sure that it incorporates data points and images and PDFs in your analysis by really specifying where you want it to extract the output from. So for the next we're going to be using deep research by combining it with a model that enhances the task that we want to complete. And in this case, because I'm looking at a task that not only involves deep research, but also some reasoning ability, I'm going to select the O3 mini model and I'm going to enter a prompt here that involves some kind of thinking that I want it to take into account while also conducting my deep research. So if we look at the prompt here, it says conduct an extensive deep research investigation into AI driven hiring and recruitment processes and their ethical implications. Again, I'm asking it to use multiple formats and sources. So I want it to find industry standards and regulations. So it will need to analyze hiring compliance laws. I wanted to incorporate case studies, media reports, and I've also given it some questions so it can conduct some critical analysis. How does AI in recruitment reinforce 
reinforce or mitigate biases in hiring? Can AI truly be fair or does it inherently reflect human biases? And in the end, I've asked it to provide a critical analysis. Can AI driven hiring truly be unbiased and ethical or does it pose a long term risk to workplace diversity and fair employment? Should companies embrace AI to improve hiring efficiency and so on? And then I'm expecting it to come with some kind of justification for its response. So we're going to enter that. Okay, so it's now come back with the output. This time it's taken about six minutes. It's got 31 sources. And again, it's shown us the whole process of how it's come up with the deep research here on the side panel. And if we look at the output again, it's looked at industry standards and regulations. So it looks at laws from the US, laws from the European Union and the other regions and local regulations. And then it talks about how well do these regulations tackle AI bias and tells us that current laws address bias in principle. And then it refers to specific laws. And then it tells us however gaps remain. And you can see that the writing here isn't especially focused in terms of writing a full report style, but it highlights the areas that it thinks will be useful for me to then build on. And it gives me examples here and it always provides the sources from where it's taken the information. And then it goes on to the corporate case studies. And here it actually comes back with an interesting example, which was the biased resume screener by Amazon. And it says Amazon attempted to build an AI recruiting engine to automatically score resumes, but it famously did not like women. This was a news article from 2018. So you can see that it actually takes quotes from the articles and the sources that it's using and it describes the case study. It tells us what's happened and again references the source throughout. And then it gives us an example from LinkedIn as well where there was biased recommendations and how they had to fix their algorithms. And you can see it's done an extensive job of compiling various case studies. And then we've got the media reports and the legal issues that have happened. So we've got a workday algorithm bias lawsuit that happened in 2023, 2024. And then it goes on to so many different pieces of information, bias and in ad platforms like the Facebook case and so on. And then it moves on to the section on critical analysis. So now after it's presented all that information, it's now using its reasoning ability to answer the question that was posed to it in the prompt. So, so the central questions in this debate are, does AI and recruitment ultimately reinforce biases or can it help reduce them? So here it starts to tackle this question. So reinforcing versus mitigating bias. And then it goes on to say that, however, real world evidence shows that AI can just as easily amplify bias as well. And at the end, we can see there's a conclusion. Can AI hiring be unbiased and ethical? Now it's using its reasoning to come up with the final conclusion and its justified response. And let's see what its response is to this question. Did it agree? Did it not agree? You can see it's responded to this question using the evidence, saying the evidence so far suggests that achieving unbiased AI hiring is possible in theory, but very challenging in practice. And as you can see, it's just done an absolutely amazing job with this. And this comes from really specifying how you want it to address the sources, giving it the critical questions that you want it to answer, and then helping it refine the structure of the report that it comes back with. So it's really aligned with the answer and the output that you want to produce. And then you have a very strong base with all the sources that you need and all the arguments that you can tweak in order to produce a very well-rounded report that addresses the topic that you're covering. So I hope you found this video useful in terms of how to optimize and to get the best out of ChatGPT's deep research feature. And I hope to see you in the next video.